you know i think i remember one song very very beautiful song where this man once said he doesn't think that heaven waits for only those who congregate and i i love that song and thinking back i well i can only assume that he means all also those who confess and stuff but you gotta admit when you let that out it feels so good and i'm talking about letting everything out even the steamy confessions i know that i wish i took this to my grave confessions <laughs> no matter how embarrassing minute or legally incriminating it may be this could be your platform Call me Lisa, and these are the first ever Sunday Night Confessions. Okay, so we got a bunch of them today, and by the way, did you know, I'm talking to you, yes, did you know, you could win 1,000 Rand, no cap, 1,000 Rand. By just simply sending us a confession of you like audio doesn't have to be incriminating nothing ritualistic or you know death you'll see you'll see what i mean you'll see what i mean trust me there are some really wacky ones in here but you can win a thousand rand just by simply sharing one of your deepest most private confessions with us <laughs> yeah i love my job so the first one comes all the way from pretoria oh yes i'm not gonna spoil it a lot let's hear what she has to say Okay, so I remember one time I went out with some friends and I got really wasted. Got blacked out, I think, because I remember nothing. Then when I woke up, I was in my bed with seven chicken heads by my side and three dudes on the floor, and I was half naked. Mmm, okay. Okay, um, woke up to a little ritual there. <laughs> but she disturbed something, I'm not gonna lie. If you're gonna, <laughs> if you're gonna go out, and wake up to a ritual you better have you know pepper spray on your i don't know just do something just carry something ladies i don't know how safe your streets are i bet they're super safe but if you're gonna go out drinking on your own or with friends i don't care just carry a can of pepper spray never hurts never hurts i mean if you were somewhere else i could tell you get a dagger like put it in your purse but okay don't get a dagger that might get you in trouble so a nice can of pepper spray maybe six six pepper sprays don't look so bad yeah just kind of protect yourself what what is this what happened i, I don't even i don't want to know wow wow okay so the second one is a little less ritualistic <laughs> thank god and a little more okay flashback to when we were little kids and we were kind of taking exams or so and we would try to copy off our fellow's paper not realizing the teacher is standing right behind us and he's seeing all that struggle and probably how we call them and you know the blues that you get all over your body <laughs> when he turns around and he's looking at you like i see you well this is what this guy had to say all the way from Cape Town. I'm sure this has happened to everyone. After a long night in Kent's Bay on my way home, I pulled up at a red robot and vomited out the window without realizing there was a cop pulled up behind me. Kemp's Bay really did a hard one on him, but hey, I hope he got home safe, sober. Yeah, that is very sobering. I'm not gonna lie. That is one of the sobering moments of his life. One can only imagine what happened next, like when he saw him. Do you think he just kind of let him go? Or he had to take that straight line test and the breathalyzer and everything? And I don't know. Like, I feel like that moment is very sobering. He would turn sober and just be like, oh, I'm sorry, I have a... I have an illness, but I'm very sober as you can see. It's a very sober moment for me, I don't know. What do you think? Let me know all the comments down below right after you send me your confession for 1,000 Rand. Yes, I'm talking to you. Come on, 1,000 Rand. It's all for you. We're literally giving it away. Just give us your confession. And the best one, just my word, 1,000 Rand. Yes, yeah, so on to the third one, all the way from Johannesburg. She's turning a little steamy. What does she have to say? Went out with a couple of friends, had a great night uh, when my friend was busy hitting on a very attractive guy. The tequila and me decided to walk over, make out with him, turn to her and say, awesome, and walk away, continuing to party. Wow. I mean, this is a kind of a yikes moment, if you ask me. 
okay, okay, no judgment here. You know, they say that tequila has a brain of its own. I see it now. Okay, so I don't know if you drink, but if you do, you know that you do stuff that, well, you probably wouldn't have done if you were in your right mind and probably for some good reasons. Well, I am so sorry. Abandoning the drunk confessions for a little while, we have one again from Pretoria from a lovely lady who says, oh, oh, okay, let, I'ma let you hear her. My boyfriend's been driving me to the therapist twice a week for the past three months. He always asks me why I'm always so happy after every session. He doesn't know I'm fucking the therapist. Okay, um, wow, wow. Imagine delivering your sheep to the slaughterhouse, you know, like, yikes, yeah, twice a week, three months? This chick is heartless. What's going on? Okay, you know what? This is nice. This is nice. This is good. You know what? This could have been worth a thousand rand if it was from you. I'm talking to you. Yes, Jeremy, I'm talking to you. Or George. I mean, Kossi. I don't know. I mean, the good thing is that all the all of these are very anonymous. I'm pretty sure if her boyfriend is listening right now, I am so sorry for Pretoria. I'm a I'm a call her Pretoria for. Wow, um, that's some really good therapy work. <laughs> Where can I find one? <laughs> okay, so moving on to number five. Ooh, all the way from London. Okay, like, what do you have to say? I had one cat that I loved so much. When she finally passed away after a good healthy life, I have to be honest, I was more cut up about losing that cat than I was about losing my grandmother who died in the same year. If this is as close as it was, it's probably around the COVID-19 pandemic and just imagine how good your cat had to be or how nosy your grandma had to be for you to feel this way. Okay, I know in our African culture, our elders are one of the most inclusive people, self-inclusive into our lives and actually very sweet but also very indulging if you understand where I'm coming from. But of course... <laughs> If one of them dies, we're probably gonna, you, know, you know, shed a couple of tears. And I'm sure he was sad too, but you know. Okay, I'm gonna move past it. I'm gonna move past it. I'm grown. I am not going to make a deal out of this. But if I had a pet, even a fish in a bowl, I don't know if it would survive as long. So I am very happy for this man. He's been a cat for two years. My god, you actually care. Speaking of fish bowls, someone had one too many. <laughs> yeah. She really did. And well, you know how your best friend escorts you to the bathroom or your apartment or his apartment or a very, very shady stranger's apartment so that you can puke and she or he holds your hair up. You don't get them wet with a blue water or any water really in the bathroom. That's just like gross. So let's let's hear what she has. When you've had one too many fish bowls and then when you don't feel so good, go to the bathroom to freshen up and with no one to hold your hair up um you go back out there and the boys are just loving your blue mermaid hair i don't know what it is maybe you can help me one of you gotta be a psyche or a psychologist or a psychiatrist why does it feel so much worse for gender A to be embarrassed in front of gender B than when it's just between gender B and gender B and gender A and gender A? I know this is basic psychology 101, but I don't really care for the college lessons. That's why I'm here on YouTube. <laughs> Help. Uh, yeah, so, so she, I feel like she felt a thousand times more embarrassed because there were guys in the house. I am so glad these are anonymous because hell, she should have been very, very embarrassed. I know I would be. And most parties like end up like that, but most parties start out very smooth. Like it's just a nice dinner, we're just like talking and hanging out, and all of a sudden we're in the pool, <laughs> and seven shots of tequila, and we're chugging. You know, like I don't even know how it got here. I say I love this because it proves a point. It started off as a quiet dinner on a rooftop in Phuket, Thailand. An hour later, it became a tequila party where three bottles of tequila were consumed by six people. Then the tequila party turned into a foam party on the rooftop where everyone jumped into the pool, fully clothed, 
and upon leaving the restaurant at three o'clock in the morning we discovered that one of our friends had lost his pants god knows where that ended up this guy probably got what he was due because he probably thought that booze doesn't damage your brain probably the same guy i think it's the same guy you tell me it was a farewell party for a colleague who was moving to johannesburg from durban many bottles of tequila were drunk whiskies beers and upon leaving we decided to walk towards the car and i discovered that my car was missing police arrived on the scene the security company arrived on the scene with their trackers only to find that i had moved the car during the course of the night and parked somewhere else i see i told you i told you and they say booze doesn't rot your brain what the heck look look, look okay how do you lose a car okay i know we've all done a lot of shady shady stuff when we were like drunk it's one of those moments if anyone was taping you would want to crawl into your grave and die there you know just kind of pre-bury yourself the later day of death which would probably not be too far away because you're in a grave so recap you have a chance to win 1000 rand we're practically giving this money away so take the money you know a thousand rand was simply sending us a confession and it's totally anonymous we don't even want to know where you are because we might follow you or not you know thinking about it so it's simply where you're from it can be anywhere in this world and i'm gonna attach the number on our description box so that you know exactly where to send it so we can make it into one of these and feature some of your most beautiful most embarrassing steamiest confessions that you feel that you could get out but don't really want the pain that comes with people knowing what you do did or i thinking of doing <laughs> And I would love to know what your dark mind is going through or your soft mind is trying to get away from. <laughs> so it's basically a voice not 20 to 30 seconds, but if it becomes 15 to 25, I don't mind, you know, I love it. I love I love the short ones, I love the long ones, I love the detailed ones, you know, the thick ones, the thin ones. They're all they're all very nice, you know. All the confessions. <laughs> so yeah, call me Lisa. And today's confession for me is I love you guys. We're gonna keep this coming every sunday and we're gonna have a compilation every end of the week tomorrow is monday so go pee and go to bed lots of love from the south african confessions i will see you next week Bye.